This is Gears of War 2. We're here on Xbox Series X, where the game is now FPS boosted. So what are we getting here? We're getting a 4K resolution at 60 FPS with no auto HDR support. But yeah, this looks absolutely fantastic. It is smooth, it is fluid, and yeah, this is this is the way to play Gears of War 2. It's basically the equivalent of getting a remaster of this game just in regards to the visual quality, the scope of it, and just really what they were able to accomplish here, getting us that higher frame rate and also keeping that resolution quality going. That is just absolutely fantastic here. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, we'll be showing off a bit of the campaign and we'll also be showing off some of the multiplayer action as well since we can find, if not other players, online bots as well. So you can jump to that portion if you want to see the multiplayer in action or you can continue to enjoy some of the campaign elements of what this experience has to offer. Do note that I think some of the cinematics, like I believe the cinematic that precedes this is like pre-rendered. So that's not going to get changed, but here, uh, gameplay-wise, you will notice that uh, the frame rate, especially like because it's in-game, if that makes sense, cutscene-wise. So yeah, it is uh, fluid and smooth playing. Well, that's not good. So anyways, Gears of War 2 continues the events of the first Gears of War title, but this time around we're taking the fight right to the Locust. We're heading down deep into the caves in this more intense emotional and lore-filled follow-up. Get ready for intense action as Delta Squad once again comes together. You've got Marcus as the main character, Dom, which can be a player too if you want to do co-op. There's also of course, your usual gang with Coltrane, the legendary Coltrane. I heard he runs on whole grain. Then there's also Baird and some other individuals that meet us along the way, including the likes of the very powerful Tough Tie. You've also got your buddy Dizzy there. And I mean, if you've played Gears War 2, you very likely know what I'm talking about. It just kind of really went big with a lot of the action here. And it had so many unique segments to it in regards to the story, and then also the multiplayer. Definitely something I had a ton of fun playing back in the day. And it's amazing, like first off, it was great to see this game with the improved resolution. And now to have this like resolution quality at a higher frame rate, it's just fantastic. Like seriously, this looks like a remastered effort. The characters are sharp, the environment looks great. The chainsaw looks ready to rev. Take out Dizzy? Yeah, right. You and me both. Delta Ty here. I'm on the rear guard rig below. See you in that down. Roger that, Ty. See you in Now we get some of our first action. Up and, protect the ring. and uh, oh yeah, the frags are over here. I, I don't know why I forgot about that. Usually I go to them right away. So once again, you know, locusts coming out of the holes in the ground. These creatures from below. Monstrous. They've got some new strong opponents this time around after you took their big bad guy out last time. 
and they're uh, kind of mad. You get some huge moments this one, not only in terms of like all the enemies you're fighting, but also in terms of like some big creature segments, which were really quite exciting. Like seriously cool. Still working on seriously. And an Asher right off the bat, the cherished, most powerful weapon in the game. It seems to me that these guys want to taste a little bit of the chain. No, they don't. No, no chainsaw. Oh yeah, there's also lots of collectibles to find. There are also a number of secrets here or there in this one, which is kind of cool. You know, it's, it's just a really good follow-up. Difficulty choices that you can make in regards to how hard you want it to be for you and your team. Just a, a great time really quite an evolution of the one that came prior and it really is a nice sweet mill spot in comparison to you know it's the first one and the third one like you could jump in here fresh i think but overall you really should play the trilogy entirely in order to get a proper you know feel for what this series has to offer and it's not always on big rigs this is just you know one of the segments in the game that kind of feels really big and really impactful that's why i always like to showcase this one off when we're doing these types of looks at the game just because it really i think shows maybe the the best of what the game has to offer in terms of scale combat cinematic moments it's a nice mix-up No. Uh -oh. Wonder what's going on here, Dom. Grapplers. I remember being so amazed by this when there's like a huge broom on here. I was like, what? And all like the locusts coming out of the ground there. Isn't that insane? How did they even get on the inside then of its bulletproof? Shouldn't that be like a sealed shut cockpit there? Oh, and there's this insane worm segment in this game. Oh yeah, that's Benjamin Carmine. So that's Anthony Carmine's brother from the first game, if you're kind of curious. Oh, I wanted to chainsaw one of them. My rig. And I 
think with that, we're almost about ready to jump into some multiplayer action in this one, I would say. Just to give you a look at how that is running, because it is going to be fantastic to finally be enjoying that one with the high frame rate there. The bridge is coming! And now it's the time to, to switch over to the multiplayer. So this is the multiplayer portion of the game. I'll also mention that there is horde mode, but we're not going to really focus on that today. We're doing some annex. So I will mention and talk about horde though, in case you are looking at this as a full, you know, kind of review of the game. Horde mode is taking these multiplayer maps, of which there are many, and it is basically uh, providing this cooperative experience where you are trying to survive waves of enemies from what is the campaign. It is fairly, you know, expansive and challenging. I think there's something like 50 waves. You gotta get really creative because you don't have any traps or tools in this one. And that can make it uh, a little bit hard to deal with. But now, with the higher frame rate, I think that helps a lot. Anyways, this is the multiplayer. Online multiplayer, again. And it is fantastic to have it at 60 FPS. Now, if you're wondering, Whoa, you're getting attacked and killed by these bots pretty crazy. Yeah, these bots are insane. Their aiming is ruthless. It is just, it's insanity. That's what it is. The aiming on these bots is, is scary. I actually did a live stream not too long ago on this one as well. Because I thought that would be fun. And there, there are other people you can come across when you're playing. You know, it is cool. But regardless, you're always going to be able to enjoy the multiplayer with, uh, you know, with these bots. And they... They put up a, a good fight, that's for sure. They they have insane accuracy. Some of the most crazy bot accuracy I think I've ever seen in a game. They are spooky. <laughs> they are not one to be messed with. But yeah, this game has a fantastic multiplayer. Even if you're not necessarily finding regular players to compete against, that this game was so good. It had a huge selection of maps, which I believe all the DLC content map-wise should be free at this point and a, a bunch of different game modes, it was really cool. Now at the launch of this game, it, it was a little rough at the launch, the servers weren't working. I remember getting this at like the midnight release and being so sad when I was young. You know, when I got home to play this and the servers weren't working, and I, I think Cliffy would even like apologize and stuff for it at one point, but anyways, yeah, I'll never forget that. But you know, once things are working and stuff, it was it was really great. You know, this, this game feels just, now it feels super smooth, like the fluidity level of moving around in the environment in Gears is so good. This is one of those games that really, really benefits from having that frame rate. It, it just it feels highly fluid. Like some games, you know, they, they feel smoother, they feel better, but the Gears of War series just seems to really, really benefit benefit from whenever you get you know, a frame rate boost like this. I'm actually surprised they didn't try to push this up to 120 though. Maybe it, uh, maybe it was too much, maybe it was too demanding, I, I don't know what to say there, I have no idea, but, uh, that would have been cool to see. So I don't know, I don't, yeah, I don't know if you've had a Gears game actually push that high before. And they might have had to, I'm assuming if they did want to try that, I'm assuming they would have had to turn off the resolution in order to do the higher frame rate, like 120. So I'm kind of glad that we got a, a good balance here of both you know, fluidity and also resolution quality, like the fidelity of it. Because I think that's kind of important. Hmm. So this one had uh, many evolutions gameplay-wise, a uh, bigger focus on crazier big weapons like this that you kind of pick up and stuff. Uh, there's like meat shields in that, and again, these bots are just freaking insane. Like, they... They down you in seconds. You, you don't even stand a chance. They're just like, no, you have died. <laughs> uh, variety of modes. You know, this is, like I mentioned, Annex, which is my favorite mode in the Gear series, where you are capturing rings. It's basically been success succeeded yeah, by the King of the Hill mode that's present. Uh, Blitz kind of was the successor for a bit, and then they kind of just have settled on King of the Hills being like the mode that kind of took over for Annex. But there's other things, you know, like Guardian where you're protecting a, a special person, uh, capture the meat, meat shield, capture the meat shield, where you gotta like 
bring this person back and forth, this beach shield thing that you can pick up, and then there's other, you know, other game modes and stuff. You got your typical execution, where you gotta actually beat people down on the ground, and then you've got your war zone where you don't have to do that. You know, just a range of different modes and options for combat. I was hoping this match would be kinda done fast so that we could show off multiple levels. So I think actually, if I was to back out and search again, I think we could get a different map. Because that's what I want to do, I want to show off some different scenarios to uh, the best of my ability. And these bots are uh, making it easier for me to make that choice. So this is Fuel Depot, which is a returning map from the first game. But with like most of the returning maps in this game, they went for more of a, a stylistic, weird, inclement weather type of thing. So a big part of this game was changing up and doing some new things with a lot of the mechanics. So you got maps with like snow going on, uh, stuff with like a flowing sort of, I guess you could say labyrinth sequel sort of river type thing. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of snow maps actually when I think about it. But they really did try to be a little bit more distinct with this one in terms of the offering for the environment. And like I said, this game had a stack of... Uh, map options that were present. That was, that was men I was just shooting at. I thought these were all guys that I downed here in the middle. Crazy. But yeah, the, the gameplay largely revolved around the, the Nasher combat in this one, as is usual with Gears of War. You know, I, I was in some fierce multiplayer matches back in the day, competing with others, having so much fun in this game. Like, it was the big, intense, really hardcore franchise on the Xbox, and uh, I, I think it was just a really great time, you know, I, I really quite like this one, I think a lot of people did as well. And the snow and stuff, like, with that fluidity increase was just really, really cool looking. This was kind of what I was looking for, I tried a few different maps, and I was like, no, not that one, not this one, because, you know, to join a new lobby, since there's not other players that I'm finding online, you just keep backing in and out, and it just puts you into bot matches, and hopefully, you know, other people would just join in. Because, again, this is the online stuff. This is the online multiplayer. Like, actual servers where you get XP, and you can work towards achievements and all that. But, uh, yeah, it's just kind of sort of wild to see it moving and looking like this. It would have been nuts to have this back in the day, right? Because I'm sure there was actually... You know, numerous like frame stuff here or there, which probably wasn't smooth, but now we've just got this really great feeling game that looks super sharp. As I had mentioned prior, it looks like a, a remaster of this game. They don't really need to re release this or anything like that. I was kind of hoping we would get like a Gears collection someday, would be really cool, where all the Gears of War games could be together with like shared multiplayer, similarly to Halo the Master Chief collection. But, you know, if this is all we get, I can't say I'd really complain. I, I think this is a, a great way to kind of enjoy the game. It, it's just fantastic. I kind of want to get a chainsaw kill before the end of this, but uh, they are giving me a very hard time in trying to do so. I don't like your attitude there, Mr. Ram. Not one bit. Oh, and this had like a huge huge selection of characters and stuff like they did in the Gears of War games they've done a really good job of, of offering a lot of multiplayer content adding a lot to the games over time typically at least in a historical sense there we go watch the chainsaw whirl at 60 FPS but let's let's see if we can sneak one more map into this so this is Underhill just Another different map to showcase. I wouldn't say it's necessarily one of the best maps in this game, but it's a it's a different level, right? Something unique, and again with a very distinct sort of snow look, but a lot more light and colorful. Oh man, this uh, I gotta say the AI in the multiplayer is insanely vicious, and I kind of want the flamethrower that Ty picked up there. A little little bit jealous of that, but overall. It is a fantastic game. If you have been waiting to give Gears of War 2 a try for whatever reason, this is the best time to do so. It has never looked so good. It has never played so good. This is a definitive way to experience what this game has to offer, and it is a great one.
I do think that, you know, it, it leans on the previous release, obviously, but you can enjoy this as a standalone experience if you kind of, for whatever reason, need to skip out on the first one. And this is a great way to do so, because it feels really good no matter which of the modes you kind of dive into. I think you'll have a really fun time.